Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. My name is Kay Junkerth. I own Fitness Junkie Training. And today I'm joined by my coach, Alex Toplin. Um, and Alex is a badass coach. He's a badass trainer, badass individual in general. He's competed on the Olympia stage. Uh, he's a super serious bodybuilder. Um, and he's trained some big names in the fitness industry, including Christian Guzman and you know, some, some names of people that I've followed for a long time. Um, and I wanted to get a chance to thank you too, Alex, just for being my coach and everything I've learned. I've learned a lot of lessons while working with you, man. Um, so I wanted to thank you genuinely and thank you for being on the podcast, my man. And I'm, I'm just excited to, to get into this. Of so. course, man. And I want to thank you, you know, not only are you an ideal client and hard worker, um, but it's always cool to connect with people who are entrepreneurs, you know, people who also understand the stressors of not only what it is to balance a fitness life, but a business and combined with it, right? So I'm excited, man. And I love what you're doing here with the podcast. So um, it's an honor to be a part of it. And uh, again, man, now that I got some food in me, now that the cheeks are a little puffed up, I'm, I'm excited to bring some energy and answer some of the questions and really dive in deep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and like you said, like business wise and fitness wise, like I've learned from you. So it's not only just like things that I've taken away lessons, you know, with my own fitness, but also kind of how to hold my clients to a certain standard because of how you've held me to a certain standard. Um, yeah. But first question I want to ask you just after mentioning, you know, Christian Guzman, I followed him for a really long time since like 2013. Um, but you competed in summer shredding and won that a while back. Um, how did it go about that you started training Christian? Like, did he approach you? Did you um, approach him? Like, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Um, so, you know, our relationship initially started, like you said, when I won Summer Shredding. And it's funny because I didn't know who Christian was when, when I signed up for Summer Shredding. I didn't own Alpha Glee clothes when I signed up for Summer Shredding. Um, I had a friend who uh, in my local gym said, hey, you should do this show. It's an opportunity to get a sponsorship. And I was like, oh. I think sponsorships are a cool thing, yeah. right? Free clothes. Um, so I signed up for the show. Uh, I was in the midst of my first ever com competitive season, right? I just competed a few weeks prior to that. I won the overall. So I was in a heightened state of, I want to do another show. Uh, this was a, a show. I didn't know the difference between NPC and just an event, right? Because summer shredding is technically an event. Um, so after winning the NPC show, um, I did summer shredding. And it's funny because I brought the NPC mind to summer shredding, which for those who don't know, summer shredding is a little different. It's more focused towards social media. It's more focused towards an experience. Like I said, nobody there in that moment is competing for a pro card. So uh, I brought the pro card NPC mind there. So I was a little ferocious. I was backstage. Everyone had cameras. I was like, what the hell are they doing? Right. I had a little bit different of a, of a approach. Uh, but after, you know, winning that show, uh, earning the sponsorship, um, you know, I was officially part of the Alphalete team. But that wasn't when me and Christian's relationship, I guess, initially started. It was just more through uh, growing within the company that then allowed me to get more access to people who were within the company. Um, you know, I, I proved myself, whether it was through sales, whether it's through content, um, you know, just being a general good fit for the brand. And then as that started going through, you know, months down the line, you know, I started doing photo shoots. They started flying me out and I started meeting Christian. I started meeting, um, you know, Ryan Dangler. I started meeting, you know, a lot of the people who have been a part of that brand for a very long time because I've been with them now for six years. So, you know, I was with them for a while or at least looking back at it now. But um, so I started meeting all those people and getting all those introductions. And meanwhile, keep in mind, you know, when I won Summer Shredding, I had 2,000 followers. You know, like I was somebody who was very, you know, small. I wasn't in the social media, didn't own a camera. I took those full photos online. But regardless, through the years of, of you know, networking and growing within the business and the brand, I was able to get those connections. Um, and then ironically, you know, one day after me and Christian, we knew each other. We took photos and stuff. We said, what's up? Whenever we saw each other, uh, we took a photo one day when Alphaland was still being built. Like, so nobody was in there. It was just like athletes were allowed in there christian and his friends um we took a photo and i posted it the next day and the photo the caption read hey maybe one day he'll let me coach him i guess all the it was me and christian and, and then i posted that and then um at that time i had ryan dangler who's probably one of my most notable clients who um you know i was coaching and he just did really well at the summer shredding uh he almost won the overall um and then a few days later christian reached out to me he was like hey like are you serious about this and i was like what the fuck? And I remember in that moment, like I, I was thinking to myself, like, 
do I even want to even accept this challenge? Because <laughs> like, it's a lot of eyes on me. I'm a newer coach. Like reform coaching has only been around for two years and I've only been a coach for three, um, you know, at this very moment. So back then it, I was so new to this, right? It was maybe eight months into me coaching six months and uh, shit, do I take on that challenge? And, you know, I, I, I put my fears away and, and accepted the challenge and, you know, the, the rest is history from there. That's badass, man. You you definitely rose to the occasion and just like, you know, stepped up like, it, yeah, you were, you were, I mean, you're younger than me, which is crazy to think. I mean, you're, you're doing crazy things, man. <laughs> it's crazy to think that you're even younger than I am. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, that, that's awesome. I think the fact that you didn't go into like trying to train Christian Guzman for like the clout, because I, I feel like there's probably a ton of people approaching him, like being like, Hey, let me, let me coach you. I'm sure that's, that was the case. I mean, at that point. He was coached by Jeff Nippard before he was coached by um, just some high Per, high level personalities in the fitness space so the fact that he reached out to me just based off of the product that I put on stage was really cool yeah I, and I think I saw even in one of his videos I don't know if you saw this but one of his videos that he put out um like he talked about when he saw you on stage on summer shredding he was just like who is this guy like you just stood out from from everyone else <laughs> he was yeah just... I, I don't it's funny because I don't even watch Christian's videos <laughs> <laughs> especially if I'm in them I don't watch them but um yeah, man, like, again, you know, I worked my ass off um, uh, yeah. to, you know, present a package on on stage that's, you know, something that's undeniable. And, you know, I think that's been the root of my success is my own career and, and, and my own work ethic. And I translate that into not only my coaching, but the standard that I hold for my clients. For sure. For sure. Going off of that, you know, just going off of my experience with you and then also talking about that, like, what is what's the hardest part about coaching coaches and coaching influencers people yeah. that are you know in the fitness industry themselves yeah so uh, i'll start with like coaching coaches um I, I actually like it because a lot of times you know as a coach you, you're probably aware that people sometimes don't look at coaching as like a job right like like they think that it's something someone does on the side and then a nine to five button up is what they you know do primarily but no like this is what we do this is what i do you know this is my this is my life this is how i pay my bills this is how i support my family um, sometimes like, you know, making sure under people and then with that people sometimes they'll, you know, not prioritize, you know, the business side of coaching um, and prioritize, you know, themselves or whatever it may be when in reality this is, you know, this is what we do. So when people don't do that, sometimes it can be a little bit of a headache and, and when I work with coaches, they understand it, you know, they, they get it, they, they respect the fact that this is what we do, this is how we pay our bills, and they look at it just like somebody else would, um, a, a typical nine to five, like they're getting a paycheck every two weeks, or whatever it may be, um, but again, when it comes to that, there's also pros and cons, right, there's a, there's a con in the aspect of, sometimes coaches think they know, you know, a lot, or that they, they know the next move or the next best thing for themselves. And I say it all the time, coaches need coaches. I'm a coach. I have a coach, right? Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that, you know, our unbiasedness and a, a clear understanding of our journey is, is, you know, set in stone because, you know, as the end of the day, like if you have a goal, uh, you're going to prioritize that goal. And sometimes that goal is going to sacrifice, you know, X, Y, Z, when in reality, a coach can kind of look at the bigger picture and say, hey, we can still get there without doing this, this, and that. That's going to set us up for failure later. So it's understanding the, the big picture. And I think that's what coach's job is. You know, as athletes, we think of the micro. As coaches, we think of the macro while making a move for the micro to get there, right? So um, there's pros and cons, definitely. But I definitely like working with um, coaches because at the end of the day, once they truly buy into the process and kind of turn off their own coaching brains at times, it allows them to fully maximize their journey. Now, when it comes to influencers, um, it, it, it's a similar situation where influencers, um, they are usually the most genetically gifted. Um, you know, they built a following, they built a presence off of their look. Now, when you attach a high standard to that look, to their daily processes, when you bring a different level of focus to what they likely already obtained, just being who they are naturally without doing those things, those fine minute details to get them there. Um, that's when you really, you know, can maximize somebody's look and kind of turn somebody into good to great. And that's what influencers typically are lacking is that day-to-day -day detail that's going to allow them to maximize their fullest potential. So when you add those things into play, 
that's when you start to see the freaky looks. That's when you get a, you, you get a Ryan Dangler to, um, you know, win an overall at his first ever NPC show. That's when you get, you know, Christian Guzman inside out peeled, um, you know, and, and winning his, um, his regional show. Uh, you know, I, I've been blessed to work with hand, uh, tons of social media influencers, and I've been blessed to have success legitimately with all of them stepping on stage. Um, and a lot of that is just simply because we've been able to tap into something that they otherwise really didn't even know that was there and raising a standard that they even have for themselves. For sure. Yeah, I'm going to kind of put in, in a pin in the in the standard because um, I, I want to come back to that because I, I think that's one of your like superpowers is just like not only holding yourself to a really high standard, but being able to to have other people start holding themselves to a higher standard. And um, that's something that I've tried to like I've taken away from this experience and I, like I've started to do that with my clients, holding them to a higher standard and everything and being able to like, you know, kind of just be blunt sometimes and be like, no, this is what you need. Like, Absolutely. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. This is what you need to hear type of thing. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a big thing I've taken away, but um, you know, wh where do you think that extreme, extremely strong leadership that you have comes from? Like where, where did that, have you always just been like a strong leader? Like where, where does that all kind of, I think, it, I think it more um, is rooted from the, the confidence in my day-to-day -day approach. Keep in mind, I'm not perfect, right? I make mistakes, um, but throughout those mistakes, I learn. And throughout those mistakes, you know, I try to stop other people from making the same mistakes, right? When I see the signs, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is I truly care about people, <laughs> like, yeah. and and, and I, I voice that. So what, what I mean by that is, you know, if I see somebody doing something that's going to lead them down a path that's not necessarily successful um, or, the, in you know, conducive to their goals that they're setting, you know, I feel an innate feeling to say something or to to help them or stop them or to lead them down this path because, you know, it's, it's more clear um, rather than staying quiet. It's like when I see somebody at the gym doing an exercise that's wrong, I feel more comfortable, you know, than most people saying, hey, what's up, man? You have a crazy physique. I think that you can even maximize it more if you did X, Y, and Z, you know, just... If you ever have questions, let me know. Fist bump, walk away. You know, it's nothing crazy, um, but it's the ability to use a passion of mine through fitness to help other people get there. You know, so I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been a quote unquote leader. Like, I played football growing up, and um, you know, I think I was more of a leader because of my play on the field than it was my ability to be in the locker room giving rah rah speeches. You know, but then I also started doing you know fitness, and. I found a passion that I've never had before, you know, even with football, like I, I just found a passion that it was very easy for me to talk about. Like it's like, yeah. when you hear me talk about fitness compared to when you used to hear me talk about football, like I can talk about fitness with different level of energy. Right. right. So I think it's just a combination of passion mis mixed with um, the ability or the want to, to actually help people. And that's come off as a leadership quality. Um, you know, cause typically I am somebody who's a little bit more reserved. Like that's just naturally my personality. I like meeting new people, but you know, I also will stay inside for a week and sit behind a computer and work without talking, you know, to the outside world. So it's a combination of both, but, uh, I think it's a combination of passion and actually caring. For sure. I mean, I, I resonate with that a lot. A lot of things you just said, I resonate with. I mean, um, so I, I think we connected on our very first initial call, how I, I was a captain of my football team. Um, but honestly, like I was one of the quietest people <laughs> on the team, but it was just like the fact that I just got to work every day. Um, I think that's why I was chosen as one of the captains. Like I was just one of the hardest workers. Like I wasn't going to let anyone like outwork me. And I think my level of hard work just brought up other people's work ethic because they were seeing what I was doing and they wanted to compete with that. So I, I, I resonate with that a whole lot with what you said, um, and I, I honestly agree. Maybe it's maybe it's an online coaching thing because it's like, yeah, we want to help people and we want to connect and like meet new people, but we can also sit behind a computer for hours. And that's kind of like, you know, where we get our energy from. So I, I think I'm kind of an introvert by nature. But then, yeah, I like to, I like connecting with people. Obviously, I have a podcast, so um, totally get what you mean by that. Um, but that's awesome. I, I want to that was actually one of the questions I wanted to hone in on was like walking away from football. I'm sure that was a, a tough decision, um, but, you know, you kind of already answered it. And I, I had a similar experience where, like, I, I became so passionate about fitness that I, like, you know, I was like, this is, I'm more interested in improving in the gym for football than I am 
football at this point. And so that's when I got like super into it. Um, but what, what kind of made your decision and like, just walk me through that point in your life where, you know, you were a D1 athlete, right? D1 college football player. And you decided to, to step away from football and chase bodybuilding. Yeah, man. Um, I think this one, I'm not gonna say it's simple because in the moment it was like one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but looking back at it, I truly just realized the, the how simple of a thought process, it, you know, really was, I just wasn't happy anymore. You know, it, the, the day-to-day operations, you know, like I like getting up and doing cardio in the morning. I like going to the gym and training. I like eating the same foods over and over again. You know, I, I, I don't mind that stuff. I, I look forward to it. When it came to football, um, I stopped enjoying the processes of what it was to be great. And whether it's film, whether it's practice, you know, getting up early to run on the field, you know, like whatever it may have been, I just stopped enjoying that process. And when you stop enjoying it and you realize like this is the level that we're at, it's, it's a full-time job on top of a full-time job, you know, with schooling. And at the end of the day, like, I just wasn't happy, you know, and I was a good player, you know, I was there on scholarship and I had to end up making a decision at the end because I, I got injured one season. Uh, so I had a red shirt year and I was like, Hey, do I, uh, do I take the red shirt? <laughs> They're going to pay for my master's program. I'm going to be there for an extra half a season. And then um, not only will I leave with my master's program, but, you know, I have another year of football under my belt and you know, who knows with the potential that I had, you know, I'm a big guy. I, I ran fast. You know, I was, I was great on paper. I was great on the field. Uh, could it be in shot to be a walk on for a team or whatever it may be? Um, I decided that I'm going to take a chance on myself <laughs> and I had no direction, man. Like in college, I was an athlete. Like I focused on being an athlete. So I didn't have internships in front of me. I didn't really have experience, you know, I had good grades, but you know, comparative to the world, you know, it's just, you know, just, I was maybe behind quote unquote on where I should have been if I wanted to take a bet on myself, but I still did. Um, I remember telling my parents that and they thought I was damn crazy, uh, but they supported, um, you know, I was ready to start my life outside of, uh, or outside of um, football and I had no idea what that was um, but you know I got a nine-to-five job I, I uh, you know learn you know what it was to you know be a foundational working you know individual and in society took a lot of lessons from that that gave me then the confidence to follow uh, my path you know for myself to build businesses and um, you know then transition into fitness throughout the years it's crazy man yeah and I think you said it's an easy decision because, you know, you, you kind of lost your passion for football, but, you know, the outside world looking in, they're probably like, man, you're crazy. Like you had a scholarship, all this stuff. You know, a lot of people just don't, they don't pay attention to like, okay, well, you know, if, if it's not something that your heart is in anymore, you know, that, that can be an easy decision. Right. So you got to chase what you're passionate about. I, I completely agree with that um, oh, yeah. for sure. And, it, you know, for me, I, I'm not as, talented as you so <laughs> I don't know what I would have felt in the, in the situation like for me it was an even easier decision because I'm like okay well I'm not that good <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah man at the end of the day man as athletes you know no matter how good or, or quote-unquote bad you might be I, I still think you know making that decision is never it's never easy because yeah. you know at least my identity was wrapped up in the football for a very long time you know and I just didn't know what I would do afterwards. You know, I didn't know what it be to wake up and not have a, uh, you know, 6 a.m. run or right. mentally have to get ready for a, um, you know, uh, I almost said show day, but a, a game day. Um, you know, so it's it was definitely a new norm that I had to get used to. But um, it was one that I was actually, you know, after the dust settled, I was excited to start to learn and live a life that didn't resolve around you know pads and cleats and I can follow passions that you know I I had but was too nervous to pursue yeah yeah I tell it's like you had to adopt a whole new identity right and every yeah. time every time you do that it's I mean it's not easy obviously yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly how it felt yeah and then going from because you said you had a nine to five what did you just like cut off your nine to five and go in on coaching? Was there a process there? Cause for me, you know, I, I had an eight to five job, like working in an office and I, I had to kind of like have this as a side hustle for a while before I could go all in on it. Um, and it was like a big decision. Um, but like, what, what was that process for you? Yeah. And this is actually advice I give to a lot of people, you know, when they, you know, want to quit or when they want to focus on a passion of theirs, like be smart. Like you have to understand, like, 
I, I looked at life like this, you know, for the first year or so of me working and re- or after me realizing I didn't want to be in a nine to five for my whole life. I realized like I had a nine to five, but I also had a six to 10 or six to 11 where I prioritized myself and my goals and building a foundation that's going to allow me to take that next step when it was or needed or when it was justified. You know, I have a family, you know, I, I, I at the time I had a girlfriend, we were living together, we we're trying to save up money to build, you know, what we've been able to build now, you know, um, and I wanted to make sure that was prioritized. I, I couldn't make irresponsible decisions that were going to jeopardize our future. So I had to take time. I had to, there were still things I had to learn in those jobs. Not only that, but, you know, there was money that needed to be saved in order to reinvest back into my, you know, quote unquote, six to 10. Um, And I saved up money. I set short-term goals. I set long-term goals. And, you know, when I got to a point of, you know, when I was making just as much money um, coaching as I was in my, um, you know, nine to five, uh, that's when I would had the confidence to, to to make that jump, and you know, just for numbers' sake, it was you know roughly you know forty clients, if I'm not mistaken, 35, 40 clients nice. um, before I made the jump into my full time um, coaching job. And I still remember the day. You know, I recorded a video of me actually quitting. Um, it's, it's a video that I promised I would never share with anybody else because it's a video that I would only want to keep for me um, and a moment for me. Um, you know, I cried right after, like literally right after my wife or my girlfriend at the time, now wife, you know, came down and this was all in videos, you know, she just hugged me and it was a special moment in my life. And yeah. it's funny that same day I quit, I lost two clients. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny, man. But that was an also precursor to, to understanding that you cannot take your foot off the gas when you're an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Like people, again, will not sometimes prioritize it to a standard that you do. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, the job, the work, you know, there's never a day off, you know, when you own a business. So um, I, I, I am very happy, but I, I truly urge people to make sure they build a foundation yeah. um, before they make the jump, because otherwise, you know, you could sink and, and, you know, you don't want to sink in an opportunity where you could swim if you just take time to slow down in order to speed up later. For sure. For sure. And that kind of goes back to something you mentioned way before in the podcast that I wanted to put a pin on um, about like, you know, you enjoy coaching coaches because they they get it. They understand, you know, and what you're saying just now about being an entrepreneur, having your own business, being a coach, like it's a constant grind. Like you have to constantly, um, you know, you got to keep going like you can't let your foot off the gas. And and I think I think the coaches, yeah, the coaches get that. But not only that, but anyone I've noticed, like any of my clients that are entrepreneurs or even sometimes if they're kind of like an entrepreneur where they're within a business or within a company where they, you know, they, they just understand that, you, you know, you they, they can't let their foot off the gas with what they do and stuff like that. They kind of they kind of get that. So I, that's what I've noticed in certain people. And then some people that just, you know, they're the type of person that just clocks in, clocks out. That's, that's kind of just what they do with their job. Um, and they don't have that sort of grind mindset they they don't understand kind of what it takes <laughs> yeah okay. and and that was me for a very long time you know like i looked at the clock every day just to get home and yeah. and sit down on the couch and hang out watch netflix you know and i don't know man it's just let's just say it's, it's definitely better on this side yeah you know it's it's there's stressors don't get me wrong heightened stressors that you know that sometimes uh, having a job that's so quote-unquote secure you know, wouldn't give you, but it's when you, when your success is dictated off your own action and, and your ability to go get it, you know, it's much different and it changes who you are and the approach that you take on a day-to-day basis and the way that you look at life. And I urge every, anybody to have that, whether it's like you said, you know, having a side business and having a secure business, but also doing things on your own that can be a hobby that brings you, you know, additional revenue, whatever it is. And you need to have that feel you have to have that you know experience of what it feels like to you know dictate your own success and not have a uh, corporate you know nine to five ladder type of position that's going to you know dictate the how high you can grow within it and I think that uh that's going to help you tap into a, the best version of yourself and a different version of yourself then, you know for sure yeah I think it's the ultimate like way to just immerse yourself in self-development you know having your own business watch watching that grow <clears throat> for sure don't agree more 
Awesome, man. Um, so you mentioned your your girlfriend at the time, now wife. Congratulations, by the way. Again, you. you're younger than me. I just feel like you're moving through life <laughs> fast. But that's awesome. Did, did you guys meet in college? Or um, yeah. So I was in college. So she is okay. uh, three years older than me, two and a half years older than me. Okay. Um, yeah, two two years older than me. Great. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she's a cougar, man. I laugh. I laugh because her birthday is November sixth, and mine's November thirtieth. So there's like a, there's like a uh, a few weeks where I can sit there and say, you know, it sounds like she's three years older than me compared to two years. So I always make a laugh uh, during those times that basically I got a cougar on my hands. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she went to Penn State University, uh, but she graduated um, after or she graduated a semester early. So I, I was still in college. Um, so we met, you know, I lived near, in that Philadelphia area. She lived in Philly. Um, and we are the Tinder success story. I always say it. Um, we, we met on, we met on Tinder and I had bad expectations and she had good expectations, um, of what they wanted out of that app. But, uh, I will say, man, um, it was swiping right was the best decision I've ever made on, on, on her because, I'm telling you right now, man, I wouldn't be the man I am if it wasn't for her. You know, when we met, like I said, I was college jock Alex, who was yeah. a football player, who drank on the weekends, who, you know, lifted for one reason, and, and that was just simply to get girls. Um, and then she took that version of me and turned me into the version who I truly wanted to be. Um, and, and that's everything, man. So, you know, another piece of advice I'd give out there, you know, you're... There's no, there's no king without a queen and make sure that you find somebody who's going to hold you down and help elevate you. Because I'm telling you, man, it's a, that, that we talk about a life hack. Some people think that girls slow them down and that can definitely be the case, but there's other side of things where female can push you forward further than you could ever imagine. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That, that was real. I could, I could feel that, man. And, <laughs> and, and I, I agree with that. I kind of resonate with that too. It's funny. We have, we have some parallels and, kind of our some of our life kind of stories or life experiences and yeah I, I was kind of a, a not not the best person in college or I don't know just you know messing around on the weekends stuff like that just chasing girls drinking stuff like that um and I met my girlfriend that I'm st still with at this time um in college too and uh and yeah she's she's changed me a lot in, in a positive way so yeah. totally agree that's awesome one yeah. thing I want I wanted to ask you this, uh, just because, you know, outside looking in, like you train attractive competi uh, bikini competitors, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. Like hey. your, your wife must have this rock solid confidence and, and trust in you. Like, you know, what, can you speak that a little bit? Cause I feel like a lot, a lot yeah. of women would be, get jealous, you know, a lot of things like that. Like, you know, what do you think has allowed y'all to have like just trust with each other and just like, you know, just with her not getting jealous and things like that. I think that's probably one of the you know coolest questions I've ever gotten, believe it or not, on a podcast. I've been on a few and, you know, a lot of times they are pretty systematic, but I think that's a, that's a good question. I wanted to say that. Um, that honestly, like from the start, like I think it, it comes with the foundation of us. Um, you know, I have made mistakes in the past. Uh, we have grown through it. You know, she's made mistakes in the past and in every relationship we have to grow through things together. Right. And when you grow through those things, you know, there's a different level of trust that's built. Um, you know, one thing about me is, man, like to the, I, I'm a faithful man. Like I, it, that's not in my DNA, um, you know, to ever have her question that. And that's something that I, I've instilled and given her the ability to trust over time. Um, and she also understands the sport of bodybuilding, right? To a degree, like she's not in it, but she's seen me in it long enough to understand that there's quote unquote half naked um, girls on stage. And I say that quote unquote is because as a coach, I don't see it that way. Like I don't see, you know, I, I see glutes, not butts, right? So when I'm sometimes even doing check-ins when I travel, because I travel often, I'm in an airport doing client check-ins and I have to remember like, holy shit, like there's a girl's glute right on the screen and there's people around me and I have to, you know, make sure that I'm in a position where nobody can see it because other people see it differently compared to the way that a coach's eye sees it. Yeah. And, and Megan is starting to see it as a way of coach's perspective where, you know, this is a body part that Alex is focusing on improving not a you know not not a butt you know so um 
Megan respects what I do. I think she sees the passion that I bring, whether it's in person at client shows, whether it's the amount of time I spend behind these damn monitors trying to maximize a client's fullest potential, that she completely understands and respects it. And it's funny, you know, me and Megan's relationship is very secure. Like we can be walking down the street and we see a very attractive girl and I'm like, she is beautiful. And Megan's like, yes, she is. Wow. And, you know, she same thing with a guy, you know, um, we walking down the street and he's like that that that's what i call a nice jawbone and, and i might make a joke saying I, I, I might kick his ass i can still take his ass though or <laughs> I, I got bigger calves or whatever it may be but like we're secure in our relationship enough to you know say certain things because understand like just because we're together and it doesn't mean other people are ugly everybody else is ugly right like yeah. you gotta you gotta build that trust you gotta build that foundation because i was definitely a jealous person growing up in and you know not in just our relationship but um previous relationships and and that was even a motivator for a lot of things that i did within fitness was trying to be better than other people um and be more confident in my own skin but i am extremely confident in our relationship and she's extremely confident in ours like you know, I talk to girls all the time. I'm backstage around females who uh, have to rub oil on me all the time. You know, I have to, um, you know, touch glutes or I have to touch certain body parts that most people, like I said, would look at and be like, uh, what are you doing? Um, but it, it's a part of the job and she understands that and she respects yes. that and she knows how much I care about it. That's super, I feel like that's really healthy and that's realistic what you said about, you know, like you can't just act like everyone else is ugly besides your partner you know it's, it's it's natural human nature like other people are attractive right but it's it's just having that trust and having that level of professionalism like you said to like you know this you know i'm doing this for my profession like and and not only for your wife but also for the clients and i'm sure they they respect and and really appreciate that as well so absolutely absolutely that's awesome awesome man um one kind of controversial thing that I wanted to dig into a few different things. So uh, one, I've shared my blood work with you and I, I'm like lower testosterone, which I'm pretty shocked about. And it's kind of like, just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to think about it. It's kind of opened my mind to a lot of different things, but you know, you've kind of suggested TRT to me. Um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely something, I think it's just a matter of time until I do that, but I'm trying to just, you know, do what I can to naturally um, improve my testosterone but just kind of on the topic of, of TRT, like how did you go about like kind of making the decision to um, go with PEDs and just like, how, how do you have that conversation with some of your clients? And just, let's, I just wanted to kind of speak on this in general, just kind of yeah. your thoughts on that. No, uh, and I love it. Well, I'll, I'll start with the client aspect. Um, I'm somebody who will never push PEDs onto a client, you know, if it comes up in a conversation in terms of, Hey, are you willing to, or have you ever thought about, then that's different. But if a client comes to me, I don't even hear them out until I know that they have done their research that, and keep in mind, reform will provide additional research. They have to have a base knowledge of any compound before they even come to me and consider anything. And it can be something as simple as what is a beginner stack that they're looking up and doing research on, you know, and, you know, if we have a deeper conversation about certain compounds, they have to go do their own self research, they have to have a foundation re of understanding that is not just a my perspective and coaches perspective. Right. Because if they don't, then that's a, a, a recipe to get persuaded or, or swayed. And that's not just by me, but that's just by anybody in life, the, the local gym guy, they go to and ask, you know, any recommendation on PD, hey, you need to take this. But if they don't have the research that shows the pros and the cons, then they can't make their own logical decision, whether it's good or bad. So making sure they have their own foundational research, which again, I have invested in giving uh, for clients, but I also want them to do their additionals. Um, you know, that's first step, right? Now, if a client does decide, hey, I want to go on to go to the dark side, then there's a few things that we prioritize. Right away, we get our blood work done. We see where their base levels are. Because again, getting your blood work done consistently, whether you're natural or not, is like having an answer to the test before you take the test. Because then you know what moves to make and how aggressive, quote unquote, you can get in order to get into an optimal range without, you know, throwing, closing your eyes and throwing the dart at the dartboard. Um, and once we have a clear understanding of what's going on internally, as long as things are, you know, healthy, um, then we can start to, you know, implement certain things. So um, 
you know, for somebody who has lower testosterone, for example, um, that's a different conversation because then that's medically prescribed. Like that's medically recommended. And I'm not a doctor. We work with a medical clinic. So if a medical clinic recommends TRT based off of levels, then I will always side with the medical side of things. Now, granted, yes, is it something that people think is somewhat, you know, nuanced simply due to the fact that it's a needle and it's testosterone and there's a uh, a stigma behind it. Yeah. But you got to realize what bodybuilding is in terms of PEDs is, is taking it to the extreme, right? It's, 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 it's giving it a bad name because we use something that's medical to, to take it further when in reality, it's still medical. But so if you don't use it to, you know, abuse it, you can get the medical benefits of it without the repercussions that all the stuff that you hear from the people who abuse it because that's what we do like we have but when it comes to bodybuilders we abuse something that is medical right and and that's how we maximize our look right so that's really what it um what it comes down to is making sure that people understand hey yes there's a negative stigma behind it but the reason for this is a medical reason right you get it from a clinic you get it you know behind the counter right this is something that is not given to you just because you want it it's because you need it if you go through the proper channels and now again there's another side of it that isn't necessarily that case now when it came to me um you know making that decision it wasn't even an easy decision to make you know it was something where i needed to talk to my parents i needed to talk to my then girlfriend at the time you know and let them know like hey i know there's six months behind it but i wanted to come to you and get your opinion on it and they understood my goals um they understood where i was they understood how serious i was in prioritizing my day-to-day -day. and i will never recommend taking peds if you don't if you aren't consistent with the, the variables of your meal plan your training intensities and again you aren't good up here mentally uh, because a lot of those things can be sacrificed when you start adding in those outside variables for sure for sure yeah it um, I think what you said about like basically it being able to maximize your RE potential and foundations that you put in place, like that, that's that's how I look at it. It's like yeah, like do everything that you can to to make sure your meals are right. You know your your workout routine is is on point. You got your mind right because yeah, because they say it can um, make you even more of whatever you are right now. So if you're if you're <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. I was talking to my wife about this the other day right? PEDs don't make you angry, right? It's not like, okay, you, you're just angry now. What it does is it enhances who you already are. So right. if you're naturally an anxious person, it's going to enhance the fact that you're anxious. If you're naturally a happy person, it's going to enhance the ability to look at things differently. Like, holy shit, I feel really good right now. Like my, my muscles are growing. I'm happier now, right? Or again, there's, there's a flip side to it. If you're naturally an angry person, it can bring out that side of you. So yes. if Again, that's what you have to be self-aware about. Taking PEDs is is uh, ability to be self-aware and understand some of the things that can come with it, right? If, if you are somebody who already has acne, it can make that gene, you know, emphasize. If you lose hair, you know, or if you are, you know, I don't know, somebody who has gyno or naturally has gyno, is, is, these things are all genetic traits that can be enhanced if you have it. Yeah. If you don't have it, then you can be in a good position, right? Like sometimes it can help you have clearer skin. It sometimes it can help your hair grow more, you know, be thicker, you know, better hair follow the narrow follicles, whatever it may be. So people focus on the negative when there is a positive side of things. And uh, you just got to understand there's pros and cons with anything that you do. For sure. For sure. Pretty controversial topics here. I'm going to bring up another one. Um, because this is something you used to post about quite a bit. And I've noticed you haven't recently, um, but marijuana or, you know, weed in general, like, you know, is there a reason why you've stopped posting as much about that? Because in, in the beginning, when I first started following you, I, I was seeing certain things. And me personally, um, I don't smoke. It's just not something I've ever really enjoyed. I just don't like the feeling it gives me. It's, you know, a lot of my friends actually did um, growing up. And I just was like, I just don't like this. Um, but, you know, for one, what is your reason for partaking? Like what, what sort of benefits do you see from, from smoking and, and like, um, and why did you also kind of seems like stop posting about that recently? You have a great eye. Um, yeah. So, um, 
I stopped posting about it because I stopped smoking. Okay. Um, I used to smoke. I was an avid smoker. I smoked every single day and I was a high functioning, high person, I guess. Like I could max, I could do maximize, or at least like I thought I could maximize my day without smoking, but I also had a bad experience. Um, and it wasn't even with weed, you know, it was like a, a Delta eight. I was actually coming off of weed. It was after the Olympia, um, you know, cause I just, I, I was in Vegas. I smoked a lot when I was in Vegas. Um, you know, it's, it's illegal there um with friends with celebrating with other athletes and stuff like that right just typical um pothead stuff I guess um and I just wanted to kind of a detox after that so I came home and I primarily started using it for sleep like you gotta understand like like somebody I was never the best sleeper so like you like I mentioned when I started taking PEDs my sleep got worse um so it enhanced that one aspect of my life um so I used me uh, mer uh, medical medical marijuana actually to help me sleep and it was a game changer um and so I would sleep like a baby and I loved it but then I started using it you know pre-workout post-workout um uh, I started finding other reasons to use it and it kind of seeped into a lot of aspects of my life that I would tell myself that wouldn't you know hurt or hinder um, but the reality was I didn't realize it until I stopped that it was slowing me down in times that um, I I didn't need to be slowed down. I need to maximize my time more. Yeah. And, you know, when I wasn't a business owner, um, it was a lot easier to it was almost more justified because I would come home every night, relax and smoke and things weren't affected in my day to day. But I started noticing it when I had a lot more of my responsibilities that, you know, required a high level of focus and energy and effort. Um, and I wasn't able and willing to put that forth when I was smoking. So, you know, the best thing that's ever happened to me was, you know, having that, that green out moment after the Olympia, when I came home, it was on New Year's day. Um, and I took a, not even, it was a Delta eight edible. So when the way that I explained it to the guy who I got it from, it was at a, a local store. It was legal. I just bought it over the counter. It was like CBD almost. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was, I just said, hey, I'm weaning, I'm leaning off of smoking, um, at least for a couple of weeks. Can I have something that helps me sleep? And he gave me this something that's Delta 8. And what I mean, it put me into an alternate universe. It was very uncomfortable and to a point that it went, it took a smoker who smoked every single day. And that one experience made me never smoke again from that very moment. Wow. So from that very moment, I never smoked again. Um, and that's when I started realizing the benefits of not smoking because I started seeing and moving faster and doing things differently and having consistent thought processes. I remember things more clearly. I think there's definitely a pro to smoking, uh, recovery focus, relaxing, calming yourself down. Like people, some people get anxiety from it. I, I didn't, it get actually calmed me down. Um, but yeah, man, I just, I stopped smoking. And the reason why I did post about stuff like that was because I post, I, even to the day, like I don't hide anything like from my life. I post about it all. Um, but when it came to stop smoking, because I stopped smoking, I stopped posting about it. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think that's honestly, you know, not to put my own judgment, but I think that it, that is going to be a good thing for you. I think honestly, just for myself, that, that is kind of what I noticed. I'm like, I feel like this would just slow me down because the way it made me feel didn't make me want to be productive. That, that was just my own experience. Um, and I was actually someone like you said that, that did get anxi anxiety um, when I would try that. But, but yeah, so I, I think honestly, um, that's just for me, it, it felt like it would slow me down. I think that's just gonna, now that you're not doing that, I feel like there's only gonna be positivity that comes from that. Um, exactly. Opinion, so. Exactly, man. And Again, I, I don't judge anybody who smokes. I smoked for practically, I'm not gonna say my whole life, but I smoked, you know, since high school, all the way through high school, through college, uh, you know, through the you know, two post years of being, you know, outside of college. And then it just took an experience that made me realize that, you know, I wanted to, or I needed to slow it down. And then when I did that, it kind of opened my eyes up to uh, a better version of myself, which I will invest that time and energy into more than I ever will. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You seem like, a, and I mean, obviously you're ambitious and it's just like, yeah, I'm the type of person, you know, where if anything's going to slow me down, like I'm, I'm trying to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't care if it's for, I don't care if it's for 30 minutes, an hour. Like I, if it slows me down too much, then, you know, I could do so much in that hour. For sure. For sure. Um, I know we're, we're coming up on time. I know you got a meeting here in a bit. Um, just a couple more questions for you. One, like, what is the vision for team reform like what where do you see it going i mean obviously you i mean man it's it's really inspiring to see what you're accomplishing in a short period of time but like where where do you see it going and kind of what's what's the long-term vision for team reform yeah. 
Um, I want team reform to be bigger than me. Um, you know, obviously I am the owner of team reform, um, but it's not Alex Topham coaching. You know, when people think of reform, I don't want them to just think of me. I want them to think of a value. I want them to think of an experience that they wouldn't get anywhere else. I want them to think of a community of, of special individuals who fucking care, you know, who, who are forced to raise their standard in order to be a better person of themselves. Like that's, that's my ultimate vision is to build a business that's bigger than me um, and, and my name and my competitive career. Um, and we're on our way, man. You know, we have some amazing coaches on our team who have, <laughs> it's insane to see where they have helped take this business to. And, and, you know, I have an amazing business partner um, who's another coach on our team. Um, you know, we're interviewing new coaches to help continue to build that message and, and push it forward. Um, but my ultimate goal here is to, you know, have reform be a household name, whether it's in the competitive space or lifestyle space, it doesn't matter because we prioritize doing things the right way. And we're not, we're not perfect, right? There's a, a lot of growing pains. Like you said, we grow very fast in, in a short amount of time. Um, there's a lot of growing pains, but with that, there's a lot of opportunities to pivot and learn from and actually build a stronger foundation. Uh, so that's what we've been able to do and maximize, which has been absolutely amazing is learning from our mistakes, investing in good people, investing in operations that's going to allow us to be successful and um, trying our best to maximize all aspects of that while also prioritizing the value we give to clients. That's my end goal. And that's my main focus is, uh, again, building a strong foundation that's going to be a household name for years to come. For sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's, it's cool to see what you're building, man. And and uh, it's it's crazy. Like, I feel like you're getting really good people in place in the business. And so, yeah, I think you're on on path to make, you know, your vision come true for sure. For, from what I'm seeing, you know, you're getting really good coaches. You know, you've, you've got like a social media, like YouTube um, editor and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. I, I, I really like that you're really into the YouTube because honestly, I don't know if I would have ever worked with you if I hadn't like, you know, I feel like YouTube is, is a whole different story when it comes to content. You can actually like kind of get to know the person. Yes. Um, so and I think all coaches should have that because, you know, if you're just posting pictures or just these little short clips, like no one's going to really know who you are. Right. So um, I think that's awesome. But, Nail on the head, brother. Nail on the head. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, on the Elevate Everyday podcast, we always ask the guests, so I'm going to ask you, like, what is one challenge that you'd like to challenge the listeners or one, you know, action they can put into place right away? Because mm -hmm. it's not just about listening. We want to put something into action right away. So, like, what is one thing you'd like to challenge the listeners to put into action in their life after listening to this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um or even just one practical takeaway it doesn't need to be an action, but just like one thing they can take away from, from listening to this and like kind of place into their life. For those who may know my personal journey and in case you haven't, um, you know, followed me, uh, this past season has been really rough in terms of competitively. And I say rough um, because in the grand spectrum, I think, I think most pros will be extremely happy with the outcome, you know, if they hadn't, you know, what, what I, you know, my placings after the season, uh, but I placed eighth place. I placed third place. I placed second place. I placed second place. I missed up Olympia qualification, um, you know, by one point um, at one of the shows I won in the morning, lost the pre-judge or finals, um, you know, and then my last show I placed third. So I've been right in that realm of requalifying for the Olympia every single season. And my main focus throughout this season uh, was to never fucking give up. Yeah. And I want to, I want to urge that to you guys, man, because I know right now people are listening to this and some, in some aspect in their life, they're, they're, they're looking themselves in the mirror and asking themselves, should they give up or, um, you know, should they take the foot off the gas on a goal that they're setting for themselves? And I want you to reevaluate yourself, look yourself in the mirror and ask you why. And if you do accomplish that goal, where can that be? And where can, and how can that set you up for success in your life? And that's what I'm going to challenge you guys to do, right? And a situation that's going on in your life right now, evaluate it. You know, evaluate yourself right now and ask yourself, if I double down, if I push through, if I bring that never fucking give up mentality, you know, and I accomplish this goal, where can that set me up for success in my life? And then if that's something that's worth prioritizing, make sure that you double down, make sure you emphasize the ability to, you know, turn that inner bitch off and again, have that relentless mentality. And if you can do that, I can guarantee you're going to set yourself up for success, especially if you are somebody who has been starting to convince yourself otherwise.
I love that, man. I love that. And I, I watched your last video. Um, I do watch your, your YouTube videos, still watch them and everything. Uh, I saw that you said, you know, you're taking these almost Olympia qualifications, like these coming up just short as it's just data. And I think that kind of sums up um, what, what you just said is like, you know, if, if you're coming up short on what you're going for, like if you didn't quite reach, you know, the goals that you, that you set out for it, like it's just all data and something that you can learn from and, and make the right adjustments. Um, and then just keep doubling down on that data that you're getting to try to improve. And, and you're, it's just a matter of time until you do reach those goals. So exactly, man. I, it sounds so cliche, but it's not, it's not losses. It's lessons if you actually, you know, digest it in that manner. Right. Absolutely. So again, you know, it's what you, I think half this battle of life is perspective. And if you can, uh, you know, change your perspective on, you know, an outcome that might not be in favor of your, you know, then I think life will be a lot easier to maneuver through and, and again, to maximize those, those time periods. Absolutely. Well, I think this is going to be a good kind of note to end it on Alex. I, I feel like I could talk to you all day, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got, I've got other questions. Like, you know, I, I'm curious about you know, your decision to go with a new coach, a lot, a lot of different things that I, I wanted to talk about, but I think we had a really good conversation here. So I appreciate you, Alex. I appreciate you taking the time, my man. I appreciate the listeners taking time out of the day to listen to this. Um, and guys, like I said, Elevate Every Day is about taking action right away. Don't just listen, put the stuff into place, take the value you learn after listening to this, put it into your life. All right. So um, guys, expert guests like Alex on the podcast every single week. So make sure to smash the subscribe button. Stay tuned. Um, in the meantime, guys, elevate every damn day. Let's go. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.